everyone, it's Erica Olson from On Strategy. Today we're talking about writing better objectives. Such a fun topic. You know when you don't have great objectives because you look back at them a month or two months or three months after you wrote them and you can't remember what it's all about and why it was important. And so let's not do that to ourselves as you're thinking about writing objectives and key results this cycle. Let's write great objectives and let's walk through how to do that. So first things first, let's talk about where we are in our plan structure. Let's get oriented. So the words we're using are the top level of the plan, our strategic goals. Underneath that are our annual objectives. And then underneath that, that cascades to key results or initiatives. So we're talking about this layer. Um, we also sometimes call that the smart layer. So that is really what are we focusing on for the current year and being really, really specific about what deliverables and what impact and what outcome we want to have for the business. So that's my first tip. Let's make sure that our objective is written in a manner that communicates impact or outcome. Outcome is probably the way to think about it. What outcome are we delivering to the business or is this objective delivering to the business? Um, let's be clear about the fact that we do want to be able to measure it. Sometimes people want the measure in the objective statement. Sometimes it's, it just sits as a sister idea. That's okay either way. We need to make sure that it is actually measurable. It should be a top focus of the organization or your team, if you're writing team objectives, and you know it's a top focus when one or more functional area or one or more of your teams has to contribute or needs to contribute to achieve the objective. And you know, it's nice to be able to articulate maybe in the statement or ancillary to it is, why does this objective matter to the business? So what's the outcome and why does it matter? It's a really, really good question to ask. And then last but certainly not least, we like to use the word specific and concrete. So let's use real language when we write objectives, not a bunch of fluffy words. And I actually honestly think concrete's a probably a better thing to key off of. Sometimes when we're too specific, we're too narrow in the statement. And what we really want to do is be concrete. So what, what outcome are we really delivering? So let's look at a couple examples here, starting with good, better, best. So just to kind of play it out. So an, a good objective might be strengthen our brand. That, that, that's okay, it's not terrible. Um, a, adding to it to make it better, strengthen our brand to be positioned as a thought leader in our industry. Okay, so we're getting a little bit about the why, we're getting a little bit more concrete, that's cool. How about something that is even better than that, even more concrete and actually quite frankly more measurable? Build a thought leadership platform to position ourselves as a top market leader. And we're going to measure that by what? Ranking sites, our rank in Google, media requests. There's a lot of ways probably to measure that. But the reason that this is better is we're saying, oh, okay, top market leader. That's much more clear about the, the um, direction and the outcome. You know, and the why is kind of in this place of our positioning in the market. And then we talked about the measurability. So, so that's an example of good, better, best to really think about using these ideas to make sure that you're writing really great objectives. So with that, Thank you for tuning in. Hit the like button if you like our content. Do subscribe to our channel. We're dropping videos every Friday. Happy strategizing.